Hi there! Welcome back to EuroCircuits TV. In our communication of January last, we explained why EuroCircuits is investing so much resources in tools for virtual PCB production. Let me summarize again. Our customers are electronic engineers who design electronic applications which they would like to build to test them. Our mutual goal is to do so right first time. Virtually simulating production allows us both to examine future results before we physically build anything, thus saving both time and money. The tools we develop to achieve these goals are PCB Visualizer for the bare board, which is a well-proven tool for many years. PCBA Visualizer or Assembly Visualizer for the populated board, which is our brand new tool. With our communication of January last, we did not only introduce PCBA Visualizer, but also launched its beta testing phase. Since then, we had many talks with designer customers and EMS customers, who both showed an increasing interest in the whole new set of design rule checks and design for manufacturability checks that visualizing the components on the bare board offers. Data processing up to five jobs a day during the beta testing phase has helped us to, let me summarize, build our EC database of verified components, improve our BOM analysis tool, improve our DFM tools, build an EC communicator to facilitate communication between all parties involved, and optimize our EC generator for creating outputs. Based upon our experiences so far, Wim, our head of development, has set up a tips and tricks session on how to pilot the assembly visualizer process. Let's now go over to Wim. Thank you, Dirk. Based on the customer feedback during the beta test phase, it is now time to go into more detail about some of the functionality of the PCBA visualizer. In order to work with the PCBA visualizer, you need to upload data. Next to the board data, which is already part of the original basket, you need a BOM and a CPL file. Let's show you what type of data we expect, which format is most appropriate and how you can extract it from some of the major CAD systems. First of all, there is the BOM, also known as Bill of Materials. This is a list with a description of all parts used on the board. The purpose of this file is to uniquely identify each part so the assembler places the correct part on the board. The best way to identify a part is to supply the unique manufacturer part number, or MPN. As an alternative, a supplier part number, SPN or SKU, can be given. For more generic components, where the specific manufacturer is not important, for example for passive components like resistors or capacitors, a clear description of value, maximum tolerance and voltage should be given. Do not forget to also specify the component type resistor or capacitor. A BOM should contain one line per part. On that line we need at least a list of reference designators, comma or space separated, and a manufacturer part number, a supplier part number or a clear description. In case you manually edit the file, make sure to add MPN or SPN as much as possible. It is also important to keep the file structure clean. All info of a single part should remain on a single line. Then there is the CPL or component placement list, also known as parts list, centroid file, X-wire file, position file or pick and place file. This file specifies the exact position of each component on the board. A component is defined by its reference designator. Next to that we need the component position as X and Y values. If possible, centroid positions should be given instead of pin 1 positions. Finally, we have the rotation of the component. In case there are components on both sides of the board, the component side should be mentioned. In case you supply Eagle BRD files, there is no need to give the CPL. This information is automatically extracted from the BRD file. A similar implementation of KiCad files will follow shortly. We already specified that the above files should place all information about a single component or part on a single line. 
In order to easily read in the files, we also need to be capable of splitting up the data in columns. For Excel and CSV files, this is easy, so these are the preferred formats. PDF and Word documents in most cases look nice to a human being, but are a nightmare for a computer to extract the correct information. Now let's take a look at how you can get this data out of your EagleCAD software. As an example, we use the Arduino project which is included in the standard Eagle examples. The BOM list should be exported from the schematic editor. Select Export BOM from the file menu to open the Bill of Material window. As list type, select Values. This will generate a line per defined part with a list of all component reference designators in the Parts column. As Output Format, select CSV to preserve the column information. Click Save, specify the file name and there is your BOM file. For the CPL file, you need to go to the Layout Editor. There are a number of different possibilities to output CPL information, but the most convenient one is shown here. From the File menu, select Run ULP. From the list of available ULPs, select mount-smd-tht.upl. This will open the Mounting Data window. In the Export Packages section, select SMD and PAT to output both SMD and through-hole components. Uncheck the SMD slash THT in separate files checkbox. In the Center section, select Origin Center. Click OK to save the file in the folder where your project data is saved. For KiCad users, the process is similar. Open the Layout Editor for your project. To generate a BOM file, select Fabrication Outputs BOM file from the File menu. Specify the file and click Save. This will generate a CSV file with all available data. To generate the CPL file, select Fabrication Outputs Footprint Position file from the File menu. Specify the output directory. As units, select Millimeter. In the Files section, output select one file per board, then click OK. There's your CPL file. The PCBA Visualizer is not only a tool to prepare assembly data you can send to the assembler. It is also very useful as a checking tool during the design of your board. By identifying the correct component in the BOM list, you can use the tool to virtually place the components on the board. This allows matching the IPC verified component footprint from our database on the board data generated by your CAD system. From the test data we have received during the beta tests of our system, we see that incorrect footprints or low quality footprints are no exception. In the CPL section of the tool, you can check the IPC verified footprint from our database of the selected component on top of the board data. In the first example, you see in red the correct footprint of the component. When this is overlaid on the board data, you can see that this component will not match on the board. If this is discovered when the boards are ready to be assembled, it is too late. The board is already manufactured, so this is at least one extra prototyping cycle with its associated costs and delays. In the second example, you see that finally the component will fit on the board, but connections will not be optimal. This board might pass the prototype testing phase, but will result in an unreliable series production. Virtual assembly can detect these issues before the boards are put to production. Finally, we want to put the spotlights on our 3D viewer for further verification of your data. Using the 3D button, you can open a pop-up where all your components are virtually placed on your board. We have tried to gather realistic 3D images of as many components as possible. When these are not available, we represent the component as a semi transparent box which approximates the component size. That's it from my side for today. Let's see if Dirk has something to add. Welcome back. I hope you liked our progress so far and that you are motivated to actively step in the beta testing process. We invite all of you to upload your BOM and CPL files together with your bareboard data. This option will be available until we have reached our daily capacity of BOM processing. Participating in this beta phase will assure that your BOM and CPL specifics will be covered by our system once we deploy it and that your components are verified and in our database. 
Our engineers will analyze your bomb list and add all of the missing parts and footprints in our database. After analysis, the Assembly Visualizer will be available in your online customer accounts in running order sections. You can then view your PCB, including components and all DRC results. We are convinced that if your design is processed through our PCB Visualizer and Assembly Visualizer, thus offering a validated POM and CPL, the access to electronic manufacturing services for your prototypes and small series will be easier. Unnecessary overheads are avoided and machine setup times are shortened, allowing EMS companies to make money with smaller orders, which will be better affordable for designer customers. Your PCBA prototypes and small series, right first time, is our goal. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and like to meet you again in the near future on EuroCircus TV. Bye!